Hey developers, today we're looking at two really cool new features of Nux.js. The first one is called content. So essentially allows you to create markdown files, JSON files, YAML files, and then easily import them into your Nuxt components. And so essentially it makes a git base headless CMS. So it's really neat. And it's also really, really, really fast. And you can even do searches. It has a lot of features. Second, I want to talk to you guys about Nux components. So it's a new feature that is coming in the uh, newer version of Nux that's not out yet, but you can try it right now by importing this in and allows you basically to auto import components in Nux.js. And the cool thing about that is you no longer have to actually import, import them in yourself. You can use them basically throughout your app. So it's just a really neat feature that you can add to your Nuxt app. Hey, and this video is sponsored by me. I actually have an amazing course that's going on right now. The cart is closing very soon. It's basically called View360. It's aim to take you from beginner level view to all the way to an expert and we're going to touch a lot of different things it's a very interactive class i'm going to leave a link in the description below if you guys want to click on it and learn more about it let's uh let's jump in okay first before we get too far if you don't know what nuxt is at all i would suggest looking at nuxtjs.org so it's basically a view framework that has a bunch of really neat things in built into it like you can do server side rendered you can statically generate your site it's basically a universal application, but it keeps on getting bigger and bigger all the time. They keep on adding newer, newer features. So it does a lot of things. It's just not SSR for view anymore. It does a lot of different things. So check out the nuxjs.org website. So let's first, let's take a look at an app that I created. So if you don't, if you, uh, if you're new to Nuxt, it's really easy to start creating a Nuxt app. You just type in npx create Nuxt app app and then the app name and this is assuming that you have node installed at least version 10 and then you just type it in my app and then it'll ask you a series of questions and then uh, basically you'll, your app will get installed now i went this is an out of the box nuxt app that i just created if you look at the package.json we're using uh the latest version of 2.0 which uh, i believe is 2.12 as this as of this recording and I went ahead and deleted a few things. I deleted everything in the components folder, and then I just have this hello from index. So if you look at the, um, the look at it, it says hello from index, that's it. That's all it does right now. So let, let's go ahead and, s before we start it, uh, I actually started it before and stopped it. Let's install, let's install the Nuxt components first, because I think this is easier to just demonstrate really quickly of what it does. So uh, as of this recording, it will be included in newer versions of Nuxt, but as of this recording, you have to install it. So to install it, you can see here it has some features, tells you a little bit about the live demo. So if you're using 2.13, then you just need to put components equal true, and then that does the automatic import of your components. But as of this recording, we're on 2.12. So you have to do this NPM, or if you're a Yarn person, uh, a Yarn install. By the way, I. I'm gonna list, I'm gonna live with npm. If you guys like npm, leave a comment below. Tell me why I'm wrong. If you're a yarn person, but I just I don't know. I think npm works, so I haven't changed. Okay, so I just typed this in here. This is my uh, directory here, and I'm just doing an npm install dash dash save dash dev. So it's a dev dependency to Nux components uh, to install the Nux components that it. Cool. Then the only other thing you need to do is add this Nux components to the Nux config file. So where you can see right here, you just go to build modules and uh, there it is. I actually already had it in there and I just commented it out. But this is because uh, I just tried it right before we started just to make sure it worked. All right, so now I have it installed and now I'm gonna go ahead and run dev and I'm gonna run it on port 4204. You can see here it says 2.12.2, so. Okay, so the server is running. I'm gonna go back to my file here, so no differences. But let's create a new component. So I'm going to create a component called, uh, we'll call it some component.view. And I'm just going to, by the way, I'm using an extension, a snippet extension. That's why I typed vbase. I was able to create this file really quickly. And I'm going to create a span and just do a hello from some component just to make sure it works. And now I should be able to import this directly in to my index file without any real issue. So I just do uh, some component and I'll have it self-closing. I'll save it. 
Cool. You can see here, hello from index, hello from some component. Obviously, I don't have any anything in here to keep it from not being on a different line. Let's see here. This is the index. All right, let's change this sum component from a span, I don't know, to an H3. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's put it H3. Okay, so it's definitely working. It's on the same line. I'm sure I could um, get this into a different line. I don't know if I played around with it. Let's see here. Container, display flex, justify. Let's do flex direction column. There we go. So now it's in a different line. <laughs> cool. So we know definitely it's working. And now you see here, I didn't do any import and have to add it into components inside here. All I did is add it to the top here, some component, and now it's working, which is exactly what I want to do, which is really neat. All right, so th we understand that now. That's pretty simple. Let's take a look at uh, content. So now we can create like markdown files and have them being imported in. Now, if you've listened to this YouTube channel, you probably know that there's something called ViewPress. Now, ViewPress is a way you can create like documentation sites. Some people have even created blogs from it, but it reads markdown files, things like that. It's a very simplified, very quick approach. But I'm thinking like after seeing something like this, I mean, why not just create your blog and, and documentation site, something with Nux and use content? I, I think ViewPress still has a few more features. I don't know the specifics, but this seems pretty powerful. Let's install it. So once again, I use NPM. So I'm gonna do NPM install Nux content. So I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna install it and this will just take a moment. Okay, cool, so it went ahead and installed and the next thing we need to do is go into our nux config file and make sure we add this line right here, nux slash content. All right, so I'm gonna restart my server here. Okay, so it's now that we have everything installed, we should be able to grab any of the markdown files and then display them in any of our view components. So let's take a look at an example of that. So now we have this really simple index file that says this is an index file markdown. And now we should be able to get it inside this export default and see it inside this component. So to do that, we're going to use something called async data. And this is just normal um, for Nux.js. This is a way to grab information on the server uh, that's in the server and inside the client and we can destructure something called content, dollar sign content. And this dollar sign content is the way we're gonna be able to retrieve data from our uh, content folder that we just created. So I'm gonna do const doc, and we're gonna await dollar sign content, and then it's a function, and then we actually pass it the file that we want, and we're actually passing the path name. So if this was in multiple directories, we could do blah slash you know, mark down, and you don't have to put the actual extension, it'll do everything for you. So since we have a content folder and we added index.md, all we need to type is index here and then fetch. And this will grab our index file. And then we just need return doc, and now we can access it. Now you're thinking, oh cool, now I can just add doc in here. So, but let's see what happens when we do that. So if we add it in here, we'll have it saved. And you can see, oh, look at this, this is essentially the whole file right here and it doesn't make much sense to us because it's just this big object so that's where this next thing comes in uh, this this thing called nuxt content so we do add this nuxt content and then we have this document prop that we bind to and then we just pass in the document which we know is doc and so if we pass it in this way it basically interprets it, and now you can say this is the index file from Markdown. So went ahead and added the Markdown file to it. So that's neat. Now, what happens uh, if you want to do like some dynamic content? And this was actually an example they showed on the web page, so I'll show you. So instead of having index.view here, you can actually um, any anything inside this pages folder is a route on your Nuxt app. So you can put in folders and then have those folders act as different kind of places in the route that you want things to display. If you want to do dynamic content, you use an underscore. So instead of using index.view here, we can rename this to underscore slug. So the most important thing it has an underscore in it. And then we could say 
okay, if we want to retrieve different content here, um, we can pass params to it. So that's another thing here. It's params. So we could do something like this. Uh, we could have params.slug. If that's nothing, it'll retrieve index, and that'll fetch it. So if we do something like this, and, ref and refresh it, it still works. This is the index file for markdown. But what happens if we want to create like an about? So I can create a new file in our content called about.md. I'm going to call this, this is about uh, component, or actually markdown file. I'll make sure I save it. And then inside our, our uh, file here, our route, if we do slash about at the top, Okay, it says this is about markdown file, so you can see definitely it's working right. Um, it's still, if you look here, it's still obviously doing this as the index, but now it's pulling the information out. So what happens if we want to go back and forth between the two? So we know in markdown, we have something like this, go to about, and then I can put this about in uh, brackets, and then the destination I can do like this. So I can do slash uh, slash about. So let's see if that works. So I'm going to go back to the home folder, go to about, you click on it, this is about markdown file. If you go back, this is the index file. So you can see this is working as we expected. So now we're able to go back and forth between the two. Awesome. So you can see you can pretty much create your whole site in markdown and just have it continuously talk uh, between the different components. It just works great. Uh, you can also use YAML and a bunch of other things. Now the last thing I want to show you is that you can also, if you like, you can add in components into your markdown it itself. And the way you would do that, now we do have this sum component here that's automatically being imported in, but I noticed that this doesn't work. Let's say I take this sum component and I put in the about, and by the way it recommends that you actually do it like this. Camel kebab casing, and you put in some component, and you save it. But if you look at my inspector here, and look at the console, and when you click on the about folder, so you can see here it works. You can see hello, this is some component. This is markdown file. Hello from some component. Um, so if we go back. But let's say we take this sum component out of this slug folder and then click on the about. You see now we get an error. It says sum component. Did you register a component correctly? So we just have to make sure. So even though it's inside this index, or I guess inside this about here, and we have that component, we still have to import it in. So this it's kind of a bummer we have to do this, but we have to do import sum component from components some component dot view and then put it here now since it's in here refresh it uh, we don't get any errors um, works as we expected cool so no errors all right so that's all I wanted to show you guys that was a quick example of adding in content and components if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. I really appreciate it. Thanks.